One of the great economic and political events of our time is linked to globalization. It was meant to be one of the best new ideas for the postmodern society. Globalization has brought new significance to spatial economics along with the importance of financial and monetary layouts. This is attributed to the longitudinal expansion of particular commercial operations in various geographical areas and the decline of specific business industries in others. The new wave of globalization is a mere subdivision of major organizational shifts that are the result of its computer's technical development. The geographical intensity and the probability of linkages between several variables at various levels of the economy. There is still a great deal of misunderstanding and variation in debates as the phenomenon of globalization has complex consequences for different people. Once there was optimism that globalization would be probably advantageous to all, as time progresses, the drawbacks of globalization become more evident. It was originally predicted on the basis of neoclassical equilibrium theory that there would be an inflow of capital into developing countries to the presumed higher rate of return there. Arising from relative shortages compared to the developed world, experience and intuition suggest an inflow in opposite direction. Joseph Stiglitz et al. wrote that globalization seems to have unified so much of the world against it, perhaps because there appears to be so many losers and so many winners. Globalization, when properly handled, will produce better outcomes for all of for all or most of us. This has not happened yet, however. In the new situation, globalization has accepted more and more nations and peoples, making it unbreakable. For example, as a result of the globalization of development, several millions of Chinese have acquired jobs, but their well-being has been less than anticipated due to the unequal distribution of wealth which has remained highly concentrated. The success of globalization for all nations may or may not flow in the same direction. Some of them, like the United Kingdom and Japan, may experience a better local atmosphere as a result of the globalization process, while others, including Bangladesh and Mexico, may experience a deteriorating and disappearing climate. The same refers to the economic or social consequences of the mechanism of globalization. Moreover, sustainable development in one of the fields of globalization that may not be essentially related to the sustainable growth in other areas and what is practical for a country may not be realistic for the global government environment. Of course, the desired outcome of globalization for most people is one in which the global environment, society, and economic system develop sustainably, and all domestic environments improve, including the well-being of all nations. However, globalization is unlikely to achieve all these objectives at the same time. This complexity of the processes of globalization, therefore, calls for a truly unified approach, combining social, economic, and environmental characteristics. Within a globalizing domain, policymakers should be aware of the growth that is taking place altogether in different fields. And growing interconnectedness requires being the starting point for sustainable international policy. If global economic processes and consumerism do have side effects, on poisoning the specific direction that these dynamics require in order to achieve a justifiable future needs to be investigated. The long-established growth versus environment tension can be exposed, for which the term sustainable development has been invented. The demands for environmental protection and economic growth are likely to be conflicting. Some claim to be an eternal competition while others point to a poten potential win-win situation. Smart plan for action in mitigating COVID-19 
impact on globalization and sustainable development goals. It is important to note that globalization is anchored with policy initiatives that open economies in both domestically and internationally. In recent times, many governments have implemented free market economic system, thus increasing their production efficiency and creating new opportunities to support international trade and investment. In some cases, governments have established bilateral trade agreements to reduce barriers to trade, thereby encouraging trade in goods, services, and investment. With this, they have built new opportunities that they are taking advantage of by building foreign factories, thus establishing trade, marketing, and production arrangement with their usually foreign partners. COVID-19 has generally disrupted these arrangements by breaking the production and supply chains. It has made it imperative for people to look inward for alternatives. Globalization is going to be stable. No one really predicted such a pandemic in contingency plans during these agreements and arrangements. And therefore, there was no provision for such a pandemic. Globalization was at the end of this COVID-19 outbreak. Job losses are on the increase, which exposed more families to hunger and poverty. Inequalities is on the rise, as vulnerable people in society are fast pushing below the poverty line. Globalization is at risk. Cross-border trade, travel, and tourism are at a standstill. The health sector has shown signs of underemployment. In all of this, it is obvious that the policies in place have not taken into account such pandemics and emergencies as COVID-19. From the foregoing, the impact of COVID-19 on the SDG with emphasis on the goals 1. No poverty 2. No hunger 3. Good health and well-being 4. Quality education 8. Decent work and economic growth and 10. Reduce inequalities Here, I'll present the following solutions to COVID-19 impact to SDG and globalization. 1. Develop policies that addresses current and future sustainable development. 2. Engaging the public in defining and creating ideas that can benefit them the most. 3. Utilize institutional arrangement and international cooperation for sustainable development. The objectives of globalization and the SDGs cannot be achieved unless a commitment is made to address the negative spillover effects of COVID-19 on them. The effectiveness of the policy environment is important in this regard. For the overarching objectives of the SDGs, the policy environment must be encouraged as well as the various policy actions to perform their function within their jurisdiction optimally and to the maximum possible extent including policies that will address future pandemics. This ensures that no one or sector is left behind. Financial institutions should encourage to adopt the option of moratoriums offering customers more flexibility across both secured and unsecured debt. The government should intensify interventions, especially for the most vulnerable in the society. COVID-19, despite having completely disrupted our lives and caused so many deaths worldwide, has provided policymakers with an opportunity to reassess our relationship with nature, the health system, the economies with our priorities. There needs to be new ways of doing business and living with innovations that will be more inclusive and prosperous, culminating in a sustainable and peaceful society. Thank you for listening. That's all and God bless.